Does fighting traffic when you shop almost make you blow your top? Put an end to traffic fears. It's very easy to get to Sears. This is a 1966 Vespa Sprint 150. This is no ordinary Sprint. This comes from the deep depths of the inventory of Sears department store. But that's not the only thing that makes it special. It's fast too! Let's start at the beginning. Meet Jesse. Before Jesse had this glorious beard, it was the 90s. And he had a Vespa. Actually, he had several Vespas, but this is like the only photo I found. Well, last year, Jesse approached me and he wanted a Vespa again. And he wanted it to be something very, very special. Well, I was looking left and right and I actually found this in Baltimore. A 1966 CS Blue Badge Sprint with really nice patina on it. I threw it up on the lift and took the floorboards and everything off and then handed it over to Jesse who used to do paint. He cleaned it up, sanded it down, treated it. He even preserved the original Sears badge. The resulting patina then was covered with a flat clear coat. In the meantime, I had the wheels powder coated in a candy blue, which matched the Sears badge the closest, resulting in a stunning look. In order to get modern suspension and modern brakes, I opted for a PK fork that is set up to go into a sprint frame. One big feature or um, bug that this bike had is the side cowl which was welded on by someone. Jesse and I kind of liked the fact that it tells its story that way, so we kept it. And that's gonna turn out to be a great pain in the ass when it came down to wiring, especially the wiring that I plan to do. But more on that later on. This bike was always gonna run a big smart carp but that came with a couple of issues, such as a fuel pump. Using rivet nuts, I think I found a quite elegant solution to mount a fuel pump hidden behind the carburetor and not be in your way. Now, seeing this carburetor begs the question, what motor am I gonna use for this? Well, for fans of the channel, do you recognize this or this? Well, this is, or was, the Pinasco RX190 motor, which turned out to be way too violent uh, for my lovely wife to ride. So I shelved it, and this was the perfect opportunity to bring it back. Using the original LML cases, I was gonna use a 62 millimeter bell crank. And just in the very last moment, I realized I should've read the description because the engine cases did not close. So I got a new set of cases, which is not these, but this is the process of milling out cases in general. And I ported them, I ported the cylinder, I got 193, 133 in terms of timing. And without having the carb touched outside the box, it fired right away. <laughs> The 
The wiring on this is very complex and special, so I'm gonna give it to six months ago Lee. He will explain. We have two specific problems with this blue badge. It is number one, this is usually an AC um, scooter, and number two, the side cowl was welded on. I wanted it to be lockable with a key, so and have it be lockable with one key, this key. So this key goes for the steering column lock, the little cover here is still missing. There's still a few things on the bike that are missing. And then said key goes to the back, goes to the back, and you can open the cowl. Now underneath here is what you're seeing here is what I call Vespa ECU. I don't know, that's cheesy, right? Vespa ECU. <laughs> but what it basically is, it combines your on and off switch for your ignition. There is a switch for your DC power system. And there's a switch for an accessory, which we'll get to later. The advantage is I, can, I made a harness on this that runs five separate electrical systems, each one on fuses. So we have horn, speedo, um, said special accessory, brake lights and headlights all on a different system. It's powered by a small lithium ion battery. There is a USB charger. That's, I mean, if you have a battery, you might as well have one. That is also linked to this specific switch. Now you're thinking, oh, it's not turned on because this is not the only switch here. If we go up front, the, I like trains. <laughs> the switch up here has been modified to work for a DC system. We basically have lines coming in, lights going back out um, to our fuse box. So once the power is on, we have two positions. Number one, which lights up, you can see it there, a pilot light and a headlight. And let me turn it back off. It also powers up our speedo. The horn has been modified to be a DC horn. Super loud. And if we go to position two, that basically turns on the headlight. Um, there's two positions. This is high beam and low beam. It was funny to experiment with this LED that has basically two colors. So this is high beam and low beam. So if you want to turn your power on, you basically got choice of just having the bike, the bike system running and your lights running. Here in the front, we have a 12 volt DC horn that's been modified so it takes the original blue badge horn cover. Um, these are riveted in and mounted. I'm a little sad I couldn't get slotted screws for this, but I will be on the lookout for them. And it is, again, very loud. This switch basically has been torn apart and rebuilt completely to get it to where it is right now. So we have our beautiful Mickey Mouse taillight. Go back a little bit. All these lights are LEDs with very low wattage. Wattage? Very low wattage. Yeah. These one here and these ones here in the back are less than three watts. The pilot light is less than one watt, and the headlight is twelve watts. Now I've talked to you about the USB charger. This is linked to the switch up front. But I also want to talk to you about this separate accessory. This is where the party starts. Perfect. 
All right, so here it is in its full glory. The patina looks really, really good. The bike got all new rubber all around, a long tail seat. I find that new floorboards and floor rails just make any old patina look stand out. It looks very clean, even though the paint is old, if that makes sense. Underneath the side cowl, we got a 193cc Panasco RX190 with a pipe design exhaust. The ignition is an SIP vape hidden under a nice burnished stainless cover. The carburetor is a Smart Carb uh, SE2 36mm with a bell mouth and the aforementioned fuel pump. The cases are VNL 3M cases with a PX gearbox and a primary transmission of 2463. I took some care with wiring and I got the original spring junction box. The front end is a PK fork with an AF racing adapter, stage 6 RT for piston caliper, Spiegler brake lines, and I can use an electric magnetic pickup for the speedo. The shock is a YSS shock that's lower than extra 10 millimeters. I had to cut a hole out of the fender because we were using the original paint. The frame still has the original Sears Roebuck and Company badge on it, which is really cool. And it has the original Sears blue badge in the front. On the handlebars is an SIP Speedo and a RockShox phone mount and an MRP oil can holder behind the leg shield. Now that it's all together, uh, it was time to take it to a dyno and get a proper tune into it. Back when I took the P200 with the 208 and the Smart Carp to the dyno, we also took the blue badge. Got it some good old race gas and bean all, filled it up and got a bunch of poles in with some minor adjustments in between. with just shy of 26 horsepower at the rear wheel. Riding this is very pleasant. The power development really kicks in around 5,000 RPM. Eventually, we're gonna put this bike and Rob's Green P on a dyno jet same day and see how they compare to each other. By now, the motor's pretty much broken in, so Jesse can go for a ride. smoke at gas station.
Well, this bike was also in such as at a charity race, but this is like the only footage I have. We also went to the Tale of the Dragon. Here are a couple of snippets. Uh, I will post the full video in the next couple of days so you can watch our full lap on the tail with the sprint. Closing words. I am very, very happy with the outcome of how this bike turned out. I basically got a blank canvas and I could do all the cool things that you know I bring to a bike, good suspension, good brakes, a phenomenal motor, uh, decent wiring, basically bringing a Vespa from the 60s up into the 21st century. I do have to say I am a little bit bummed that both Jesse and Rob now have the fastest Vespas in Atlanta. I am gonna be working on that. Until then, don't forget to comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one at the tail.